Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel, my name is Mike, and today we are going to be talking about this. And this would be my blush, blush collection. I will also be featuring a couple of products that you can at, uh, can't really see at the moment, um, because I have been buying and trying quite a few blushes in the past few months. So actually currently not everything fits into this little container that I have. Um, so there's some stuff lying right here on top. I've got my face palettes in the corner, some of which I haven't shown you yet. And then I also have some things like lying right here at the front. So let's start with face palettes first. So these are my face palettes. And in case you're wondering, Mikey, you also showed us creams in your bronzer and your highlighter collection, which I will make sure to link down in the description box below in case you would like to see all of my highlighters and bronzers, which kind of live over here. Um, I don't currently own any cream blush. I actually decluttered, during my last declutter earlier in 2020, I decluttered all of my cream blushes because I just don't use them enough. Uh, I, pref I like a cream highlight for sure, but cream blush, I don't know, I just never really got into it and so I decluttered the last ones that I had. But I do have like four cheek palettes that have blush in them and those I haven't shown you yet. All of these have brush, uh, blush, bronzer and highlight. So I could have featured these in every single one of those um, videos that I've, did, I've done so far. However, I wanted to put my contour sort of palettes with my bronzers and my more highlightery palettes with the highlighters. So that's why I kind of sort of split it up. So in this little Z palette are four products by Benefit. This was the Cheekathon Face palette I think it was called and I bought it because it had a couple of shades in the Benefit box blushes range that I was very much a fan of that I used to own or whatever and that I somehow and I was like this is a great way to still own them I thought the packaging was bulky so I de depotted it and put it in this little Z palette it's got Hula, Dandelion, Rockator and also Sugar Bomb of course swatching blushes is very very tough uh, especially something as light as dandelion because that's almost like my skin tone uh, so that's that's hula it's a bit too warm tone for me it's a bit too dark I have hula light as a single because of that this is the rookator one which is nice but I don't really reach for this a lot sugar bomb same thing nice but not something I reach for dandelion is one that I used to have as a full size and I ended up decluttering it because it was old and then I bought this palette thinking oh it has dandelion but I find that this shade isn't the same as the dandelion that I remember loving and then we get my three favorite travel palettes so when I travel I like to not go for a separate blush bronzer and highlight I like to have something a bit more compact on hand this is the elf face palette that I build out of three palettes that either did bronzing highlighting or blushing and I just took one shade, or at least I kept two of the shades from the bronzing palette, one shade from the highlighter palette, and one shade from the blush palette, and I sort of cobbled together my own perfect travel palette. So that's what this is. I don't know what these shades are called. I just know that if you can still get these square face palettes from e.l.f., you can very easily pop them out, and then you can put them together in whichever way you seem fit. So there we have those four products, and the reason why I have this one is because it has a bronzer and a contour for me. The shade is this really nice, or the blush shade is a really nice like pinky, corally kind of shade. I really like that, and the highlighter in this is like more subtle, but it works quite well. I like this for like a, just a basic sort of go-to kind of look. As I, as I mentioned, I like traveling with this. But my more used travel palette because it is simply a little smaller even than the elf one is this sleek face form palette I believe it's in the shade fair yes it's in fair and this is what that looks like it has a bronzer a highlighter and a blush this is a dupe for like nars orgasm it's that kind of shade and this i have traveled with for years i love just being able to throw this into a makeup bag and you know it's so so slim the packaging on this is just absolutely great so that's why it's one of the very few sleek face products i've kept around and this like the bronzer is spot on this highlighter is a little bit more vibrant 
It is a little icy though for most people, I think, and then the blush has a lovely golden glow to it. But yeah, this is just a really nice, basic, standard cheek look. Goes with everything. I don't have to think about it. Love this. And then, last but not least, the Catrice Romantic Gardens, Gardens Everyday Face and Cheek Palette. I don't... do they still do these? I don't know. But I kept this one around uh, Lassie Color because I quite liked it. It's got three blushes, a bronzer, and two highlighters. And this is just a little, like, it just gives me a, a, more options in the blush department. The other ones, I feel, are both quite similar in what they have to offer in terms of blush. And this way, you know, you've got something a bit lighter, a bit pinky, a bit orangey, peachy, and then the bronzer is a bit deeper. So this works quite well, plus this has a really decent sized mirror. So let me give it a swatch. So those are the three blush shades right there. And this also gives you a little bit more in terms of like what you get out of the highlighters. Um, because one is a little bit more subtle and the other one is a bit shinier and then the bronzer is just, it's a pretty good decent bronzer. It's not the best one ever. I think I like the one in the sleek palette better, um, but it's a good bronzer. Good enough for me anyway. So this is just if I want more options. So yeah, those are my three pa travel palettes because that's when I use these. So now I've added everything that was supposed to be lying on top if everything was in here. Uh, these are the blushes that are currently in my shop, my stash, so I'm kind of keeping those separate for now. So I know I remember to put them back into my everyday makeup drawer. And then everything else is either newer or stuff I just recently used in a shop, my stash, and it doesn't really fit with the rest. I have two blushes that I would like to show you because they are new, but that I haven't even taken pictures of yet. So I won't be swatching these for you because I have yet to take pictures, but I wanted to show them to you. Um, I got these in the Black Friday sale and I also got a new ColourPop blush, but that's still making its way to me. <laughs> that was also a Black Friday sale purchase. Um, but this is the Nabla Skin Glazing uh, uh, Powder. Um, and this is actually a highlight. Like, the Nabla range comes with bronzers and highlighters. This is in the shade Lola. And this is like, this is described as a watermelon pink, and I thought this could be a beautiful blush on me. I love this formula in both the highlighter and the bronzer, so I think I will also enjoy this as a blush. And then something that I had been wanting to try for more than a year, and I finally bit the bullet because I thought it was a little bit expensive, but I got myself one of the cover effects monochromatic blush duos with a matte and a shimmer. Mine is in Mojave Mauve and it's not as mauve as I thought it was going to be. It looks a little bit more pink in real life now that it's here, but I think it can make for a nice cool tone mauve and I hope it's not too deep for me. Um, the, the, I think the peachy one was the one I uh, recommend it for fair skin tones, but I don't like peach blush all that much. I love a mauve, so I thought I wanted to try this shade. So I still have to try this out. I don't know anything about the, uh, the formula. I've just heard Samantha March saying that this is so, so pigmented, and a little goes a long way. So we'll see how it goes. Everything else that's here, I've tried, I've swatched, or they are long-standing favorites. Let's start with the four blushes that are currently in my shop, my stash, just to get them out of the way. So... Currently in my shop, my stash are these four blushes, and this one is one of my favorites for the winter time. Balm Beach by the Balm is a peachy toned <laughs> blush, but it's very very light. Um, this is a um, like it's very fair, and it barely does anything on the face. Like also when you see this swatched, like you'll probably wonder like what will it do on your face? But if you want to go for something super neutral, this works really well. And then I also put in the Essence Blush Lighter in Cass's Sunburst. I also have a peachy version of this, which is also in here somewhere. We'll get to it later. And this is a really nice, like it's got a matte side and a glowy side. I like swirling them together like this. And it's a bit of a plummy, so nice, like more of like a sheeny. I'm, I'm really, I used to only go for matte blush but the past year or so I've really developed a love for all things glowy blushes. Urban Decay Afterglow Blush in Rapture. Again, I have more of these, so you'll see the rest in a minute. This is a really nice, deeper plum shade, and this may look a little 
dark for someone as fair skinned as me. But as you can see, it just shears out really, really lovely. It looks a bit like a bruise here when, it, when, it, when you swatch it full on, but on the cheeks, I promise it looks really, really lovely. And then I also selected my Kiko blush. This is the shade Fusion blush in the shade Marsala. And I just mentioned loving mauves. And this is a mauve. <laughs> so that's a little lighter, like you kind of, you, you will see in a minute what I like. Blushes just don't swatch very well in finger swatches. You always need to see them on the face. And now we're moving into all of this. And these are definitely also some newer things. So the Melt Digital Dust Blush in Raw Honey. I knew when I spotted these being announced that I wanted to own, especially this one. Um, they do a peachy one which seems lighter but very often I, I prefer going with a shade that works for me rather than <laughs> an undertone, like the lightness of the product that needs to work for me. So this comes with two sides. I've only used this once or twice so far, so it's a bit warm and deep perhaps if you see it like this, but oh boy, this is such a such a pretty blush. I have to say though that with a brush this definitely doesn't look this intense it's just super glowy this is great also as a blush topper i think then we have the flower beauty uh flower pot and spiced petal they were out of sweet pea when i found these they are currently doing flower beauty in dutch drug stores i'm super happy so that's why i got this to try it out and i put it in my shop my stash and i really like this shade it's a bit deeper again but I kind of like this. It has a mauve brownish kind of shade to it so this worked really well and I love the formula. Uh, this Ciate blush in Matchmaker was in my shop my stash last month. Um, it's sort of like a plummy kind of shade, kind of. Uh, it's a bit of a nondescript kind of color but it is a really really lovely glowy blush. I just love this. It's just one that if I throw it on, it just looks good with everything. That's why I love it. And then just recently, I also got myself a new The Bomb blush, The Bomb Fire Beach Goer. And this is a duo with High Tide and Low Tide. And especially Low Tide is what makes this blush so unique because that's very cool toned. And I sort of put these, put this on, they are super shimmery too, but do you see, it's like NARS Orgasm but with like a pull on me undertone. And then I put Low Tide over it, because that's how I would wear these, and then you get this super shiny, like look at how glowy that is, like it's even glowier than the Melt Digital Dusk, like it's got a lot of shine. I think that Low Tide, like can low key be used as a highlighter for sure. And then also in here is my only Ofra blush. I really wanted to try the Ofra blush formula because I love their highlighters and I was like, maybe I'll like this too. And this is the Samantha March collab. This is the chiclet blush that she did together with Ofra. And I like swirling these two together like this. It's a bit deeper. <laughs> when I got this, I was like, ooh, that's quite deep. Um, but yeah, it's got a glowy uh, side and a matte side. And as I mentioned, I just like doing it like this. And then again, you get this really nice, it's sort of like that flower beauty shade I find, but then a bit more pink and with more glow. I love it. And then KVD Vegan Beauty Fox Glove. This had been on my wish list for a long time and it's such a nice, really smooth, say it with me, mauve tone matte blush. Like, this kind of shade, like, you will see, this is gonna come across, we'll see this a lot in this video. Like, this this kind of shade I just love. These, I'm going to hold off on showing you for a bit because I have the other ones too. So I'll show you all of those together. Hiding in the back here, which I'm not sure if you can see. Oh, you could a little bit. But this is a L'Oreal blush, Life's a Peach, that I bought for a full face of L'Oreal. And I mentioned peach blush, it can work, but it has to be the right shade of peach. This was a bit too orange for me. I bought it for that full face video, so I know I will never be using this, so that's why it's sort of like lounging in the back, so 
it's awaiting a declutter. <laughs> and uh, then I'll definitely get rid of this because this was not my favorite. It's just a little bit too orange. And the blush that was totally hiding, because I uh, don't, don't even keep it in here, is the Maybelline Fit Me blush in the shade 15 Nude. I bought this for my full face of Maybelline and also didn't like it. This reminds me of blush shades that my mom used to wear in the 80s, which is why I'm like, oh, please don't. Like, it just, it just really didn't do enough. So this is already with makeup that I know I will declutter, whereas this one's sort of like still in purgatory here in the back. So now we're getting to the main collection, and the main collection I have divided into like higher end stuff, and then we get drugstore stuff. That's the way it works. And then right here at the front, which you can't really see, I've got three like bulkier packages that don't really fit anywhere here. I definitely, like my aim is always to try and keep all of my blushes in this one container. It just always just just about fits. So again, when I do a declutter, I need to get rid of some stuff. I think I already know what kind of things I would like to get rid of, but then again, we're not doing a declutter right now. We're just talking about all the good stuff that we have here. So let me talk about these three larger packaging products. Like these are bulky and these I only use during the summertime. That's when I use these. These are actually both bronzers, but you'll see in a minute why I use them as blush. And then this is a Too Faced Sweethearts bronzer in Peach Beach. Uh, bronzer? It's a blush. <laughs> I also have the, the bronzer from this collection. And this is such a nice, really pretty, very glowy blush shade. And this I used in my full face of Too Faced, and everybody was telling me how great that cheek look was. And I have to agree. This is, till this day, one of my favorites. If we go peach, I want this. Like this barely there, like the balm, like that. Like not that very orangey L'Oreal thing we just, we just saw. And then these two, as I mentioned, are bronzers. This is the Summer of Love Triple Baked Bronzer in Love Hut Summer. Yes, I got that right the first time. <laughs> By I Heart Makeup slash Makeup Revolution. And it's like a bronzer, but it has a lot of pink and gold. Do you see that? So I love wearing this instead of like blush, bronzer, and highlight on really hot summer days. That's when I reach for this, when I don't want to feff around with my makeup too much because I know it will just melt off my face, but I still want to wear something. I have two options for those days, and it's this one and this one. So let me swatch the Makeup Revolution one. And it's just, it's got warmth, it's got pink, it's got gold. So it just kind of does everything in one go. This is also something I love wearing on like no makeup makeup kind of days. You know, I just want to throw something on. I don't want to faff around too much. Uh, Floor Mar, this is a Turkish makeup brand. The Terracotta Powder in Marble Pink Gold. And it's similar to that Makeup Revolution thing, but this has a few more shades in it. It's a baked product. I haven't used this in a while. I usually go for the... Makeup Revolution one. This is a bit more bronzy, but still very glowy too. So I think we'll start with the drugstore and go like this. So right here at the front I have my two Wet n Wild blushes and I actually kept this one, this purple one, over a MAC one in my last declutter and then I have the Wet n Wild color icon in Rosé Champagne. This is a really nice neutral blush, like that barely there kind of look. Um, this really doesn't do much, but it just has a nice bit of glow. But my favorite one of the two is the purple one. This is the Ombre Blush in, in a Purple Haze. And ooh, this is very, very cool toned and very fair, but it just has a bit of that sheen, you know? I like that. And I actually think what I want to try, because I have a matte purple blush, which you will see in a minute by Urban Decay. And I think that topping that off with this would be very pretty. So I think I want to try that in the winter time because in the dead of winter, like January, February, that's when I like wearing purple blush. Some Catrice. We have the Blush Box Multicolor Glowing Blushes in a peach and like a mauvey plum. This is my favorite of the two. This is called uh, Dolce Vita and it's got a huge dent in there because of uh, my nail having an accident in there. 
These are really lovely. Like, the trees do some really lovely blushes, but they just discontinue them so fast that it's really difficult to keep up. And then this is its wine o'clock. This is really pretty, too. So there we have it. Like I tend to wear the peachy one more in the spring summer time and then this one more in like the fall winter time. That's sort of how I go about it. But yeah, these are two lovely blushes by Catrice and also a bit more glowy. And then <laughs> the cutesy factor goes up with the lovely cookie blusher by Etude House. This is in the shade Ginger Honey Cookie. And I bought this for a full face of like Asian, Korean makeup brands. It has really simple plastic packaging, but then this little puff, oh, it's so cute. And the blush inside, I mean, it's another mauve. Like what else, what, like mauve nudes is just my jam, as you will see. But this is so, so pretty. The formula on this feels like a high-end blush and this retails for like five dollars on yes style let me see if i can build it up <laughs> just to uh show you this a bit better but yeah blush swatching will be fun when we uh when we get to our tart ones here because those really don't show up in a swatch <laughs> um but yeah this is that honey lovely what's it called lovely cookie blusher it's so so pretty it's got a bit of a sheen but not too much love it Luminoso by Milani. Oh yes, the OG. I still have mine. I like this in the spring summertime, but again, peachy blush. I tend to be a little bit picky. This is one of the very few ones that I kept because it has that lovely sheen. And then Physicians Formula Butter Blush in the shade Plum Rose. Yes, I used to have another one. I had Vintage Rouge, but it was too similar to that the Balm Beach uh, blush that I showed you, and I felt like I didn't need all of those blushes. So I kept this one because I felt it was a bit more unique. But again, <laughs> you know, this is just the kind of thing that I really like. Ooh, that really doesn't show up very well in a swatch. I can see it in real life, but it's just so sheer. And I think that was one of the things that people didn't like about these butter blushes is that they're so light. I mean, I'm super fair. I'm like an NC 10 to 15 <laughs> in MAC. So um, just for reference, so for me, this works, but I understand that for most people it doesn't work. This is a really nice blush for the winter time. And then Essence, the Matte Touch Blush in Blossom Me Up. This has been discontinued, but I kept mine because this is one of my top five all-time favorite blushes and it's like two euros and 50 cents at the drugstore. It's a mauve tone neutral blush. What else is new with me? Um, but this is this is just something I love. Again, you can't really see it. You can't, it's right here. Got a bit of a vein going on there. Hope you can see it. And then I've got some brighter blushes as well. I have the, Me uh, the Makeup Revolution Baked Blush. Uh, this is the Blusher Reloaded in Rhubarb and Custard, and I'm not gonna lie, I bought this because of the name, but it seemed a fun shade as well. It's just, ha, huh, I'm a bit, like, this is nice for the spring-summer time for sure, it's just, it's not the kind of formula that I really, really like, so this may, may be one that I end up decluttering. I far prefer my Milani Coral Cove, this is in that rose petal one. I used to have another one in a nude shade called Tea Rose, but I ended up using this far more than I did that. And I have so many of these like nudie, mauve tone blushes that I was like, I can do without that one. But this one I do use in the summertime for nice, for a nice bright option. Oh, of course it doesn't stick to my skin right now. My peachy sister to the uh, plummy one that I currently have in my shop, my stash, this is the blush lighter in Peachy Dawn. And this is even glowier than the plummy one. I feel that this is a lot more glowy than the one in the plummy shade, which is why I did really like this a lot in the spring summertime. Again, it's a lighter peach. The shine on this is great. And again, these are super affordable by Essence. And then I have two ColourPop blushes and I have, I've only tried these two and both are not my favorite. I'm hoping that the third one, like three times the charm, and that that one is going to be my favorite ColourPop blush. I just find that ColourPop's shade descriptions and then when I get it home, 
I feel it doesn't always translate. So the first one I got is Parakeet. This is not from some sort of collection, it's just that. I had expected this to be brighter and more like Coral Cove than this more muted coral shade. It's a matte. It's okay. I'm just not a huge fan. It's okay. It's got a bit of that reddish undertone that I do like, uh, so that's why I did keep it around, but it's not my favorite blush ever. It's just a bit too particular of a shade for me. And then I have Catch My Vibe, and this was part of the Making Moths collection, but it's a baby pink, and I don't like baby pink blush all that much. However, for a baby pink blush, this was really lovely. It's like a blue toned pink. It's got good pigmentation. It looked lovely on the face. It's just not my favorite. And then to round off my drugstore blushes are these two by H&M. These I've had for a long time and I'm an advocate for H&M blush because they do some lovely things. Let me see. Let's do this one first. This is Conta Loop, and this is a melon colored shade. So it's a little bit different from the peachiness that I've been referring to. Um, but this is really lovely, very light though, but that's lovely. And then one of the blushes that got this whole like mauve blush love train started was Tawny Peach. And that's what this one looks like. Like this is an OG. This shade has been discontinued, sadly. Consolope you can still get, but Tawny Peach you can no longer get. And it's a really nice, more nude blush. It's not very um, warm or cool leaning. It's more like smack in the middle neutral, I find. Alrighty, so we have high end stuff left. And one of them is hiding here. This is a newer purchase as well. This is the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow Blush. And this is a blush that I had been lusting after for years, but it always came in very bulky packaging with a brush that I knew I was not gonna use. So I waited for them to put it into singular packaging like this. Can we focus? And this is what it looks like. It's a very vibrant, bright pink, and it's supposed to be like color adjusting. I don't really believe in that, but I don't have anything like this. It's such a nice, like, blue-toned, pinky, bright shade. Again, nice as a blush topper, I think, in the wintertime. I love this kind of shade when it, because it really gives me this, like, fresh in from the cold kind of look. And that's what I love about this. We've got, oh, let me do all Too Faced stuff together then. So I had that Peach Beach blush, but I also have some of these Love Flush blushes. Sadly discontinued because these are lovely. The nude one I have is Baby Love. Um, this I've used so much, but that pattern is still intact. Like, how did they do that? And this is one of my favorite, like, nude tone blushes. And then I also have it in How Deep Is Your Love. This is what I tend to do when I love a blush formula. I tend to have a nude and a bright. That's that's how it roll, how we roll. Or if the shade or the range doesn't come with brights, I'll have like a nude and a plum or a mauve and a something else peach, <laughs> like with the Catrice and Essence stuff. So yeah, this is How Deep Is Your Love. And then I also have one of their fruit cooked cocktail blushes. This is in Berries and Bubble, Bubbly. And this is the only one that I selected that I found in the line that would work for a paler skin tone because all of these are quite deep. I would like to try more, but the shade selection kind of throws me off. And this side is super glittery. So you do have to like a good deal of shimmer with this one. But this one I found works really, really well. But as you can see, it's got a lot of shine, but I love that currently. And then we have Becca and I wanted to try some of their blush. And then they did these champagne splits and I was like, that's a great opportunity for me because at that time I didn't own that many Becca highlighters yet. So I bought two of them to have a blush and a highlighter that also pair really well. Um, let me see. Is this the one? This is the one I want to show you last. <laughs> this is the one. This is Champagne Pop and Flower Child. And the reason why I keep this blush around or this product around is because of Flower Child. Champagne Pop is too dark for my fair skin. Sadly, because everybody was going gaga for this. Who remembers that Jaclyn Hill launch? <sighs> yeah, so Flower Child is really lovely and then it goes perfectly with Champagne Pop. I love this combo in the summertime. Put this all over the cheek, this on top, works lovely. But my favorite of the two is Prosecco Pop and Pomplamousse. And this is like a shocking coral and then this golden tone and these, I feel, work much better 
on my complexion. This is a bit like warm toned almost. Well, this is warm toned as well, but you can tell. Like if I go for a bright, like for a bright blush, I go for this. Like this is very similar to How Deep Is Your Love by Too Faced and similar to the Milani Coral Cove. Like it's that same sort of like, like reddish, corally kind of shade. That's what I like. And Prosecco Pop is a bit more golden toned. And Champagne Pop looks lighter here, but I feel that this gives me more of like a dark cast than Prosecco Pop does. Moving on to Tarte, and I have three shades. That's how much I love it. We're getting into favorites territory, people, can we tell? So I have not exposed, but seduced, because it's a bit more cool toned, you could say. I have Akiote, Achi, I don't know, and Natural Beauty. So let me swatch these for you. And Tarte blushes are notoriously hard to swatch. So I'll try my best to see. Oh, this one is okay. That's a deuce. And this is one of the very few like darker peach blushes that works well on me. That's Akiote, but then again, that just shears out a lot. And then we have Natural Beauty, which is a pink toned red that works really well on me in the winter time for that fresh out of the cold look. I get that with very blue toned pink, purple and pink toned red blushes for sure. So those are those three Tarte blushes. And now it's time for my little The Balm family. I already showed you two of these. I showed you The Balm Fire because that was new and the one that is at my shop, my stash, which is The Balm Balm Beach. But in the The Balm Balm Beach line, you also got The Balm Springs Blush. And this is not really my shade, so I'm thinking of decluttering this because this is, to me, this is quite similar to that Maybelline Fit Me blush. Like, it's just, it's a bit like old lady-ish in terms of its shade, so it's not my favorite. I prefer the Bomb Beach for sure, but the Bomb's packaging is just, oh, it's so pretty. So I can't, I can't let go of that. I just can't. Hot Mama, a classic. I ended up keeping this over Nars' Orgasm. Do I need this? No, because I have this in some of my face palettes because this used to be the blush shade to get. Um, but this I found a little bit more flattering on me because it is, I wouldn't say less intense, but it's perhaps a little bit more like Deep Throat, which is also a bit pinkier and less orangey than Orgasm. So that's why I like this one. And then... I am proud to present to you my full collection of Instain blushes. I owned these two already, and just this fall, uh, these were discontinued I think a year or two ago, and all of a sudden these popped up on sale on a website where I never buy makeup from. Uh, if you're in the Netherlands, it was Weekamp, which I didn't know they sold makeup, but apparently they do. And these were 8 euros each. So I got a massive, massive deal on these. I think they were even buy one, get one free when I bought them. I got a huge, huge deal on these. And now I own all six and I own the entire collection, which I don't have for any other blush I own. There's only one set that I wanted to complete and it was these, the bomb in stain blushes. These are the longest lasting, most pigmented blushes I have ever tried. A little goes a long way, and I now have all six shades, so I could just, you know, do away with everything and just keep these six, and I'd be happy for the rest of my life, because I now have every single shade possible um, that you could possibly want in a blush shade in one single formula. Let me start with the two that I already owned, and the ones that I initially bought was Lace, and Lace if you buy, well, these are discontinued, but a hot pink blue tone blush. <laughs> this is not for everyone. It's like Barbie pink in a blush. Just look at that. And these are so long lasting because as the name suggests, these stain. And I love how these are like designed to look like vintage magazines, if it will focus. And I love how these are designed like little vintage magazines. I love it. And then the other one that I bought originally was Houndstooth. Uh, this is a plum. <laughs> it's, it's a mauve plum. It's a bit deeper than most of my mauve tone blushes, which is why I always like this one. But it is a bit more neutral. So that's why I like that one. Um, and then 
I was still lusting after these ones. So the one I really wanted was Argyle. And Argyle is, uh, is described as a peach, but then when I got it home, it looked a lot more pink. <laughs> so this looks to me like a baby pink in real life, but this is described everywhere where you can still find information as a peach. But to me, that, that would be a baby pink. Like, I thought this was going to be like a lighter version of Balm Springs for some reason. Uh, and then a very deep, cool-toned plummy shade. This is the one where I'm like, eh, not sure I can pull it off that well, but this is Pinstripe. Right? Am I I'm correct, right? Yes, Pinstripe. This is a really, really deep, intense plum shade. A bit more cool-toned, very unique. I think, I hope it will look nice. I think this is more of like a shade that you can wear when you have a deeper complexion, but... I'm not sure. Curious to try. And then we have Toile, which is a pink toned red. They did so such great shades in this line. I don't understand why they discontinued it. Look at that. So pretty. And then last but not least, we have Swiss Dot. And Swiss Dot is about as bright of an orange as I would go. <laughs> Um, it is a little bit more muted. It's more like a corally, like an orange toned coral. So where, like something like this, Coral Cove is more like a pink toned coral. This is a orange toned coral. That's how I would define it. Starting right here at the front, I have two, uh, ooh, two Benefit blushes. I used to own more of these, but I think I got them on eBay and I wasn't sure whether they were real. So I got rid of them and they were old. So... I now just own Coralista and Gold Rush. Uh, I would like to own Dandelion, for sure. Like, buy it as a single rather than having it as a face palette. I think that would work better. Are you ready for this one? <laughs> this is one of the oldest blushes in my collection. Hence the pan. Uh, and Coralista, I've kept around over things like Nars Orgasm and all that. This is just a bit more subtle than Nars Orgasm ever was. So this is very sort of, it's a coral, but it's a very soft coral. So lovely on my fair skin. And then Gold Rush is very similar to Coralista, I find. Just came with a lot of overspray, so you kind of need to go through that first. But this is like the peachy version of it. <laughs> so I feel this is very similar, but then more peach. And I got it as a mini because um, getting like hitting pan on this took me years. I was like, I might as well just go for the mini. Let me see. So that's Coralista. Ooh, this is Coralista and that right here, that would be Gold Rush. And then we have the remainder of my Urban Decay collection. So I kind of discovered these right as they were discontinuing them. So I actually got all of these on sales. I was very happy to, <laughs> to say that. However, you can no longer get these. So let me just breeze through these real quickly. These are some of the more unique shades in my blush collection for sure. Uh, the first one here is Bittersweet. It's a purple. <laughs> uh, and as I said, I love wearing purple blush in the winter time. There we go. And then we have Bang. This is an orange toned red. I love wearing that in the summertime. Get over here. Look at how pigmented these are. These are so vibrant. And then this would be Video. And that's a brown. And I don't own any other brown toned blushes, save for this one, but it just looks like a nude on me for sure. I love this Urban Decay line for it being much more unique than many other blushes. They also did your standard like pink and peach and like everything, what everybody else does, but in this line I definitely went for more unique shades that I didn't have anywhere else. And then we have my three hourglass blushes. I have a nude, a plum, and a bright. What else is new with me? So uh, this is the bright one. This is Incandescent Electra. And this I got because I love the other ones so much. Wait, did I say a nude, a plum, and a bright? No, I have a, a nude, a red, and a bright. Um, so this is Incandescent Electra. And this I got because I like the other two so much. And it's a very nice much more glowy because the incandescent Electra is actually not an ambient lighting powder. It's uh, infused with an ambient strobe lighting powder, which is Hourglass's high highlighter formula. So this is much more glowy than the other two. And I love 
you, you know what I love by now. This like peachy, very glowy shade. I just love. This is Mood Exposure, which is one of my favorite nude blushes. I had this in my shop, my stash in November. Um, this is such a nice like plummy mauve kind of shade. And then we have Diffused Heat, which is the red tone blush for people who don't like red tone blush. Like, if something like Twile by um, The Balm or Natural Beauty by Tarte or Bang by Urban Decay, that's too intimidating. This still gives you that red sort of flushed look with a bit of glow. It's a lot more nude, muted and toned down. My only MAC blush that I still have in my collection is Warm Soul. And this is one that I know I'll declutter <laughs> because it's been... Ooh, 10 months since I did my declutter and I haven't reached for this once. Not one single time have I felt the need to reach for Warm Soul. Max Blush Formula, it just isn't my favorite. I've decluttered all of my MAC blushes over the years. And this one, it's just, it's just a bit too orange for me. That's probably why. Something I won't declutter is Pillow Talk by Charlotte Tilbury. This is one of her cheek to chic blushes. Yes, it looks like a nipple. Everybody does it. Uh, knows that. <laughs> um, but this is the swirl and pop kind of system that Charlotte uses to apply her blushes. So you pick up the product and you dab your brush in the middle and then you apply it to the cheeks. That's how all of these blushes are laid out. But Pillow Talk is a bit different from the regular ones because this has the most, the darkest color on the outside and then a bit of like a highlighter kind of shade or like a glowy shade in the middle to make it more glowy. So you can either apply this matte or with a bit of glow if you mix them together. I like mixing them together. I just kind of like swirl my brush in there completely. Um, and then you get a stunning, oh, you can't even really see this, this really stunning neutrally kind of shade. I love it. We already did the Too Faced, so we've got two left. And that's these two. These are duos. This is the Natasha Denona Diamond and Glow Mini that I picked up from Sephora. And this is another contender for the chopping block uh, because I ended up not liking this all that much. Uh, it's really glowy. Not gonna lie. Ooh, let's put it here. Um, but I just, it just didn't do enough for me. I found it very difficult to pick up with a brush. It wasn't my favorite. And then this is Jouer's uh, Blushing Bouquet Duo, uh, Rose Gold in Marigold and Rose Petal. And I thought I wasn't going to love this because these shades, they didn't really appeal to me. But I wanted to try a, a, a mini version because it was just much cheaper than buying a full size. And I wasn't, because I already have plenty of blush. So I didn't want to go with something that I was like, am I really going to get the use out of that? I don't know. It comes with a darker side and a lighter side. I like using these together. Actually, where, where can I put them? Here, so this is the darker one. And then this one as well, but swirl together. These make for the most stunning, like where this is just a bit too orange by itself, like warm soul, because this is also that orangey undertone, but if you swirl them together, you, you make it a bit more neutral. I found that that worked really well for me. So there you have it. Those are all of the blushes that I currently have in my collection. I didn't count, did you? <laughs> Maybe I can, because uh, I, I, I think I just have way too many by now and other things have come into my collection that I now love more than some of these other things. So uh, I definitely need to give this a good clear out in 2021. Not anytime soon. I'm not yet really, really solid on some of the newer things that I've bought. So I first want to make sure I give everything enough of a try, uh, as well as that ColourPop one that's still under underway and the two new things that I bought. So lots more things to try. Hopefully I can do it before I film a declutter sometime in the springtime. I'm sure I'll be having that up. So I hope you enjoyed watching my blush collection video. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week. So see you in my next video. Bye-bye!